go to the interviews for today. Check out my new video, Strip, and have your life change. Strip and confess things do get bad, but God will turn things around. Check it out. Woo! Therefore, what God has joined together, Jesus added the fourth reason for the inviolability of marriage. God ordains marriages. They are not to be broken by man. In other words, what God has joined together, that no man put asunder. A woman, a chick, boo. You hurt me. You hurt me. And I feel broken. I'm really not broken. to deal with it.
the video strip my personal testimony my personal song you can find that at www.kadeshlove.com for more information on today gosh we have such an amazing amazing testimony a testimony that is definitely going to change your life and if this testimony does not bring you joy then I don't know what else will <laughs> on today I have a special guest my special guest his name is David Snowden David Snowden has gone through as the, the as the name Kadesh he's gone through battle but he's also victorious Amen. yes he is yes he is and even before, even before I bring David to speak and introduce him to you, I want to share a scripture with you. And that scripture is, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. That's Job 13, verse 15. And that is the testimony of today. My guest, welcome, David Snowden, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as you can see at home, the set is kind of rearranged today, and the set is rearranged because my special guest, David, is in a wheelchair. And the reason that David is in a wheelchair, I'm going to let him tell his story, but again, he, the reason I chose to interview David on today is because David is the only person that I know in the world that has joy every single day of his life. I'm talking about in the morning, if you talk to him, there's joy. In the afternoon, in the evening. And today we're going to find out where that joy comes from. But before we do that, we're going to talk to David and ask him what exactly happened. I know, but you don't know. So welcome, David, to Looks Like Destiny. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, David, we're, we're, tell us what happened that day and what you remember before we get into anything else. Share with our audience. Okay. Before I do that, just give me permission to say that I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I know you talk about joy, joy, joy. I'm just a little bit salty because I thought that was going to be me in that video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, uh, you know that was supposed to be you, but yes. unfortunately you were, you're so busy and you were out of town. Okay. So. But right. the next one, you know, you were in the last video and you were getting down. Like, and <laughs> with his humor, and that's the first thing. That's that serious. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start, Dave. The first thing is that God will fill you with an unspeakable joy, and that's what he has. So tell us, David, about the accident. So about uh, 25 years ago, uh, I was shot five times in a drive-by shooting. Uh, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't curse, but I was in, some people say I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I, I, don't, I don't believe in that. Um, I just didn't live that street lifestyle to understand what was going on. Mm. 
Interesting that you say, I don't this, I don't that, I don't the other. And so many people in the world are, are thinking that, you know, I'm so good, why me? Right. So many people are thinking, you know, I've never done this to anyone, this, that, or the other, why me? And right. again, you just said nothing happens for, you know, basically not, not no reason. So explain that a little bit. Go a little bit deeper in that. Well, I, you know, when I first got hurt, that was my initial reaction. Why me? You know, because I don't do those, do those things, and I still don't do those things. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my initial reaction. That was my struggle. Um, you know, why should it be? But, you know, God said, why not? Like, who are you? Mm -hmm. So let me make an example of you, and not in a negative way, but let me make an example and, and show that, you know, whoever's out there looking at, looking at you, whether it's, it's personally or from a distance, that if I can bring you out of this, I can bring anybody out of anything. Jesus, amen. How, did you feel differently towards God when it happened? And I heard you just say a few other things, but did you feel differently? I, it, it, you know, sometimes it could be the why me, mm -hmm. but there also could be a reaction to the, to the things of God, like, okay, Lord, I accept why me, right. but did you feel different towards God? I don't think I felt differently towards God. I mean, I, I questioned it at first. Again, it goes back to that carnal selfish, why me, why me? Um, I don't think I felt differently about it. If anything, it certainly brought me closer to him. I mean, whenever something in your life happens like that, you have a choice. And, you know, it's all about choice. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, draw closer to him or draw away from him. And, you know, I, I think for me, after that initial struggle, uh, it was such an easy to think, thing to do because I knew beforehand of all that peace and that joy that I had before it happened. And that's something I didn't want to take away because, uh, that's just something I really, really enjoy. You know, how did you turn tragedy into triumph? I know that, you know, because of your natural sense of humor, you, you've always been a very funny person. Uh, <laughs> you guys didn't see that. Come on now. <laughs> um, however, you know, when you go, again, when you go through a tragedy, um, I know that you're the type of person that I think you do more than people who have, uh, than people who are in their 20s. You... Well, if I come to town, you pick me up. You just about get out the car and take my luggage, et cetera, because you're such a gentleman. But how did you turn tragedy into triumph? What was on the inside of you? And I know it was God, mm -hmm. but what did you draw strength from? Every time, every time you got to take your wheelchair apart, mm -hmm. put it back together, get in. There's been times we've talked and you basically said, you know, um, don't help me. Right. You said, because I have to do it anyway. Right. Well, because I know that this is not the end. This is not me. This is, this is temporary. So I, I understand it. I, I understand that at the end, for those who are believers, we'll win. So this is just minor, just very temporary. Wow. You know, if you had to encourage someone, we have many uh, uh, viewers that some are paraplegic, some are laying in the bed and, and can't move for whatever other reasons. If you had to look into the camera, if you would look into, I think it's this one right there, yeah. If you had to look in and encourage someone and then pray for someone, I want us to do that. But first I want you to look in the camera and encourage someone that might be going through, not necessarily oh, uh, the same accident right. that you had, but right. perhaps they are just stuck in a place where, God, why me? Right. Or stuck in a place where, you know, why did this have to happen? Why did I lose this person, that person, or the other? Right. What would you say to them? And look right there in the camera. I would say, you know, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't get caught in that quagmire. Don't get, don't get tricked. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's deceit. It, 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 it's, it's the wrong message. Um, you know, there's so much joy and, and peace out in the world. I just want to encourage you or anybody else going through anything. Everybody has their cross to bear whether it's you know, financial, whether it's mental, whether it's psychological, whether it's sickness, it doesn't matter what it is. Everybody has their cross to bear. So I would encourage you to you know, stay in the word, and when you receive that peace and that joy and that comfort, you'll certainly understand. I wish I could just bring you in to show you, but once you get to that level, you'll understand. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm just going to begin to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray right yes. now for every viewer, every person that's wondering, why me? Yes. Every person that's wondering, why did this have to happen in my life? Yes. Whatever that may be, yes. I'm praying, God, that you would give them strength. Yes. I'm praying, God, that you would encourage their spirits, God. Hallelujah. I'm praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus right now that they would understand that there's somebody going through the yes. same situation, yes. that yes. there's somebody who's actually worse off than them. Yes. And in the name of Jesus right now, yes. I just pray for each and 
and every person under the sound of my voice uh -huh. and let them know that God still loves you, Absolutely. that God still has a plan, yes. that you are still important because yes. God created you. Yes. Even in the midst of the storm, God knew what was going to happen. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I encourage you right now and I plead the blood of Jesus even Thank over you. your mind. Thank and even as we use David here as an example of Christ's yes. love and Christ, yes. everything pertaining to God, when you look at him, you see God and I encourage you, you to hold on to your faith. Yes. I encourage you not to let go, even though you may get tired, yes. even though you may get weary. Yes. I encourage you to faint not because there is joy coming in the yes. morning. God yes. has a great plan for you. Thank God you. has a great plan for your life. And on today, hallelujah, I say in the name of Jesus, Jesus. victory is yours. Yes. I say in the name of Jesus, you are still walking into your destiny. Yes. I say in the name of Jesus, there's yes. a purpose that's waiting to meet your destiny. And hallelujah, you have the victory yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, David, tell me about how your friends react to the fact that I think now, I think after your tragedy, which was how many years ago? 25. 25 years ago and I see you in front of the church just praising God I see you uh, with your nieces and nephews just having a great time you still play basketball right well somebody has to play in a family <laughs> what position do you play uh, point guard point guard yeah. Can, so, can, can you show us what a shot looks like what your, what's your form look like well, so I'm just you know make sure the elbows tucked in follow through <laughs> yeah, straight, straight. This is amazing, the joy that you have. Let me ask you a question. Oh, did you, I'm sorry. Did you ask me about the championship we won last year? For? <laughs> uh, no. I... Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, tell me about the championship. Oh, since you're asking. <laughs> uh, we just he's, wanna... he's looking for a movie deal. Somebody out there, come on, sign him up. Sign no, no, him up. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no, we just went 34-0 and, and just no big deal. Woo! Yeah. Wow, you know, Dave, you're, you're such a, um, the life of the party. I think I've said that many times to you. But how did your friends react to the fact that when this happened, you drew closer to God instead of further away from God? I know that there are many people that, that even today mm -hmm. don't understand how you are making it. So, so what, what was that like? I think it's pretty simple. I think, well, not I think I know, but for the believers, they knew what I was going through. They understood. And, yeah, that was great. For the non-believers, those were the ones that um, I had to convince and let them know that, you know, this is not a fluke. This is not some psychological well-being. This is not, you know, therapy. Um, this is not escapism. Um, those are the people that you had to, to, to constantly testify and let them know uh, that there's certainly uh, joy to still be had. And when you say testify, mm -hmm. what, was, what is the testimony that you're testifying to the people? Because, again, you can say, you know, God is my strength, you know, I'm happy, and then many of your friends possibly think that you're going home ready to slit your wrist, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, but what, is that test what does that testimony sound like? If I'm that friend mm -hmm. and I'm saying, yo, how you doing, and, and, you know, what is it that you say to me? Well, you still have to believe. You have to understand. And, and again, it, it's... For the, the believers, it's easy, but for the non-believers, it's not. And for me to, to, to bring them over to the other side is to let them know that, you know, what, what are you doing now? Are you, 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 what are you doing to escape this, this life? Are you depressed? Are you sad? Are you, you drinking? Are you smoking? Are you doing drugs? You don't have to do any of that. Obviously, you're looking for that peace. I think Jesus. everybody innately is looking for that peace, that joy, that something. Some people, it's materialistic things. It depends on what it is for that individual. And they know it's just something that's on the inside of them. So when I, if, I, if I bring them to church, and invite them to church, if I have prayer with them, whatever it is, they'll understand it. Once they get that spirit, once they understand what's going on, then I can bring them to, uh, to, to God. And again, I just want to go back to, and that's awesome that you just said that, but I just want to go back to the beginning where you said you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. You were in a neighborhood that you, were you still living there in that neighborhood yes. then? You were still living in that neighborhood. Yes. However, there was some bad people in the neighborhood and you were standing in front of a house mm -hmm. and whoever was trying to get whomever accidentally shot you. Right. Let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. Are you angry at that person? No, absolutely not. Awesome. No, you can't, you can't hold on to that. As a matter of fact, when it happened, you know, I'm not a, 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 a thug or a person. I'm a nerd. 
So when all that went down, you know, I was like the person in the scary movie was like, oh, what's going on? What's that noise? That's pretty <laughs> peculiar. And it, I guess they were like, okay, this guy's not going to run. Let's get him. So when that happened and when both sides, both bad folks realized what happened, both parties came to me separately and said, hey, we can get those guys. And I said, for what? I mean, it's, wow. it, it's circulate. It, that's just evil. It's, it's not right. Let it go. I'm okay with Stop it. Stop right there. You said they said we could get those guys, and you said, no, that's evil. Right. Now that's when you know you have Christ down on the inside of you because you, you, you were looking at possibly never walking again. And even though it's been 25 years, we still trust that God can work miracles. Right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but the interesting, thing, the interesting thing is that right now you're changing more lives being in this situation yes. than mm -hmm. perhaps, and we've talked about this many times, you're changing more lives than perhaps if you had your two legs and went on with your life. And sometimes I say that because sometimes we go through obstacles in our life and we wonder why we're still in the same place. We wonder why we're in that situation. And sometimes God has you in that situation for somebody else, for right. you to be the example, for you to be the testimony. God needs somebody to be the right. testimony. So right. as he said earlier, why not me? So just please really quickly continue, because that was really interesting what you were just saying. In, in, terms, of why I, in terms of why I told those individuals not to go exactly. after. Be, because, I mean, it's that, and again, I, I want to make sure that I say that it's not me per se. It's definitely God. I, so, <coughs> so when people say, oh, he's a superhero, he's so courageous, it's, it's not me. Uh, I, I want to put that past. That's why, and again, you know me, that I don't like that sort of attention, because it's not. I mean, if I had my druthers, it'd be like, <coughs> hey, push somebody else in the way. No, i not do that. But, <laughs> but if, you know, if I, didn't, I didn't choose that. You know, David is a very modest person. And even as I asked him to be interviewed on today, he said, you know, I don't like the attention. I don't like the fanfare. He said, basically, yes, I want to be a celebrity site. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, you know, <laughs> no. he said, um, I, I don't want all that. He said, however, if I could change one life, and let them know that through my tragedy, I have the victory through my situation and everything that I've gone through. God is greater in my life than he was even then. He said, then I'm willing to do it. And on today, I know we have millions of viewers watching. And I just, once again, I encourage you. But more so even than encouraging you, I introduce you to love. Absolutely. This is what love is about. And the next song <laughs> that I'm going to sing is called Love. And I say that this world needs more love. We need the love of God. We need to understand who Jesus is and that he's coming back again. And you need to just open up yourself to the fact that in spite of tragedy, you can be triumphant. In spite of going through Amen. a situation, you still have the victory. All we got to do is love. Amen. So on today, hallelujah. <laughs> on today, I just want to say thank you, David. For being on the show, you got to come back when I, when I do my cooking segments. If I can get in that video, that love video. <laughs> well, I guarantee you the next video, I, I don't know about my love interest because, you know, my husband might, you know. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but maybe we'll find a part for you. Okay. So thank you so very much for thank being for here. Me. My live studio audience, you look amazing! <laughs>
Just like 